Welcome to Upon This Rock. Today we're continuing the series of Through the New Testament in 2022. We're in Luke chapter 23, jumping to verse 1. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. They had to bring Jesus to Pilate as the Roman government did not permit Jews to execute anyone. Pilate was known as a corrupt and cruel leader that murdered many people. Verse 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. Obviously, Pilate being a Roman was not worried about accusations of blasphemy. So they had to bring accusations to the Romans that they would care about. Verse 3. And Pilate asked him, saying, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief of the priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was also at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Herod wanted Jesus to perform for him. Verse 10. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and set him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, and have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. Nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. This was a severe punishment that led to the death of many, and he was completely ready to have it done to Jesus, whom he knew was innocent. Verse 17, For of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas who for a certain sedition made in the city and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, What, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired, but he delivered Jesus to their will. This story should fill us with thankfulness, as Jesus did not die just for Barabbas that day. But he also took our place. Barabbas was a murderer, yes. But are any of us any more worthy than Barabbas when compared to our perfect and holy God? Isaiah 64, 6 says, Our best is as filthy rags before God. Verse 26. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus said, There is no need to weep for me, but rather for those that have rejected me. Jesus allowed all this to happen as he was in complete control the whole time. He did this for me, and he did this for you. John 10, 18 says, No one take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Verse 29, 
For behold, the days are coming which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. When they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Isaiah fifty three twelve says, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Verse 25. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. Of course, he did not choose to save himself, because by his sacrifice, he was instead saving us. I've heard it said it was not the nails, but rather love that kept Jesus on the cross. Verse 36, And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And when Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Many have pointed to this as an example of salvation without baptism by water and spirit. However, this idea is based on false information. At this point, they are still under the law, not under the new covenant in which we are enjoying today. Jesus had not yet died as the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Verse 44, and it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. This veil that had separated man from the presence of God was now torn. We now have free access to God through the cross. Verse 45, And when Jesus cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said, said thus, he gave up the ghost. Isaiah 53, 3-5 says, He is despised and rejected by men, man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he was borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Verse 47. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the woman that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel indeed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in the sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and Sabbath drew on. And the woman also, which came from him with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulcher and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Thank you for joining Upon This Rock. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and God bless.